All right, everybody, before we get into the review, I do want to say a huge thank you to Fine Fine for sending out this microphone for a review. And on top of that, thank you for just being an awesome company. I told them that I had a premature newborn at home and it might take a while to get the review out. And they were very helpful and understanding throughout the whole process and just overall a good company. So again, thank you, Fine Fine, for um, being patient with me for this review as well as uh, sending out the microphone for a review, which I, like I said, we'll get to in a second, but fine, fine. Hey, if you want to, you know what I'm saying, sponsor or, you know, want me to review anything in the future, I would gladly take that opportunity because this microphone, hands down, full stop, is the best microphone, I think, for new beginner content creators out there on the platform. And on top of that, it's only 60 bucks it's crazy the quality and premium filling materials and everything to build quality everything that went into this microphone so without further ado let's review the fine fine am8 <laughs> all right so like i said in the beginning of the video the unboxing experience was very premium it was so premium and actually really good that i had to actually take a picture and tweet out to find fine about my experience unboxing this microphone and then on top of that i did proceed to use it on a live stream and the people in my live stream seemed to actually like the quality of the microphone out of box straight no eqs or anything like that just hook up plug and play now this microphone is a little bit unique it has the ability to be able to use the xlr cable or a type c input as well as having a headphone monitoring jack on the bottom of the microphone now i will go ahead and say tldr if you want to know should you get this microphone if you're a beginning content creator yes I think that you should get it. I think honestly, it's the best microphone under a hundred dollars. And there's a reason why I'm going to say that is because there's only another option from sure. I'll put on screen their variation of it that actually that I know about that has a good sounding quality, especially for live streams or voiceovers or something like that, that allows you to be able to use a type C or a USB interface or get you an XLR interface and upgrade like to XLR input in the future. I think if you're getting into content creation more often than not, a lot of people go with USB microphones. So having that capability of upgrading later on down the line in the future, when you want to get you an XLR interface, um, having that ability already there and not having to replace your microphone like I did when I upgraded to an XLR interface, um, I think is very, very helpful to be able to get this microphone and be able to be like, hey, I paid $60 for this and now I can upgrade whenever I want. Um, another pro I would say is the fact that it has RGB on the microphone and it has a capacitive mute button, but I will get into some cons why I think this, it might just be my model, but we'll get into the cons with those in the, in the future. But it has a nice um, windscreen or pop filter, whatever you want to call it, that goes on top of the microphone. It feels very premium, lavish. I, I, I literally, I know they sent this microphone out for a review, but I can't get over the build quality and how nice this microphone is. I can't, you have to touch it and feel it in person. You have to unbox it in person to really get that to come across how good this is for just 60 bucks it's ridiculous to me um the only thing i will say that there are other microphones out there that you can find on amazon a good contender against this microphone if you're looking to get into streaming is something like the elgato wave one um, which is under a hundred dollars usually you can find it for i think around like 80 bucks um there is another fine fine microphone out there that's usb that i covered previously i will go ahead and link it up here um, in the cards so you can check out that video but those are condenser microphones uh, and cardioid microphones this one is a actual dynamic microphone so again the 
the best comparison would be from Sure, which the microphone that I had been personally been using, but I know they have a version that has the XLR and a type C input. Like I said, that one usually going to cost you around, I think $160, $70. I'll put the price on screen for that. I got mine with just the XLR input instead of having the two options. And, um, I got it for a little bit cheaper than that accent price, but having this and the sound quality is it's crazy. I don't think at this price point, you're going to find another microphone that has both inputs that has this amount of sound quality coming from the microphone. And on top of that is a dynamic microphone, um, which means essentially it's going to reject any noise around. And if you're a streamer and you play keyboard and mouse or you type a lot, or you have ambient room noises, like a fan going because maybe a room gets too hot, stuff like that. You want a dynamic microphone. Um, yes, the other types of microphones out there do pick up your voice and more richer and sounding and everything because it's allowing more noise in. But if you're like me, who has a premature newborn, a fan going, a wife, um, the walls are not too uh, thick or wherever in our apartment, your microphone is not going to pick up that much noise. Maybe you have double PCs in the room, but like I do, I have two PCs in my office. You have a whole bunch of noise, background noise, and you want that to be uh, toned down as much as possible, then you will have that with a dynamic microphone. Hence why I suggest getting a dynamic microphone and a lot of streamers, um, especially, uh, I would say a lot of more professional setups have dynamic microphones instead of, uh, any other type of microphone out there. Now, with that being said, on the front of the microphone, you do have a gain knob, which is really nice. And you had a headphone volume knob as well. And on the front, again, above those, both of those knobs, you'll have the capacitive uh, RGB controlling uh, button. And then on the back of phone of the microphone, it's just a mute mic, mic button or a capacitive touch button. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the cons out the way. There's only two cons, which I guess could be summed up in one con with this microphone is I had issues even on stream while streaming that um, the sensitivity is weird. I don't know again if it's just my um, microphone that I got, which I probably it probably is because it's the the capacitive buttons. Um, but the sensitivity on changing the RGB and turning it off and turning it on and stuff because you have to hold it down for like three seconds to turn it off slash on and then cycling through colors and stuff it seems to be a little bit sensitive heavy like barely touching or getting your finger to even come close and not really touch the microphone and it just turns off or switches colors so if you find your color or you find that you want it just to cycle through the spectrum of the rgb then go ahead and just leave it there try not to touch anywhere near that at least from my experience um the competitive mute button i've only been able to test it once unfortunately i wasn't filming when i got it to mute and unmute but again for some reason me touching it and trying to fiddle all over the mic it just won't mute for whatever reason now some people might say that's a deal breaker for them me personally i use a wave xlr that has a capacitive mute button on it i've never had an issue with muting my mic doing that so my use case scenario using a xlr interface i just don't have that issue as far as muting my mic you're on a usb though I can see where this could become a problem, but again, if I had this issue, I would just, with just USB, I would just reach out to find, find, ask them, you know, hey, what's up with this or something like that, possibly get a replacement or anything like that. But again, to me, it's not a deal breaker because there's other ways to mute your microphone other than just tapping your microphone. To me, it's not a deal breaker. Honestly, if that's the only cons for 60 bucks, that's it's it's crazy to me i honestly think that any new content creator like i said multiple times should pick up this microphone and if you are interested in this microphone, there will be a links to the amazon uh link down below which will take you to the page to purchase this microphone because uh, i think you should stop what you're doing if you're a new content creator looking for a microphone and possibly future proof yourself go pick up this microphone with that being said here's that sound test that i am currently running no uh nothing at all it's set to 42 db like i said on it and all the eqs are muted so this is how the microphone sounds and for like i said 60 bucks i think you can't beat this microphone so let's go ahead and turn the fan level on three
Now, with this fan being this close, you're probably not going to run into this kind of issue or wherever. Obviously, you're going to have EQ, so you're going to have a noise gate, all that stuff. So it's going to block out this uh, background noise. But this is just an extreme case. This is not something that's going to be uh, normal for anybody. All right, so now we're turning the fan down to two, which is probably the highest I have the fan on. It's usually further away than this close to the microphone, so it's not something I ever have to worry about, but this is what it sounds like with the fan on level two. All right, so now we're bringing down the fan to its lowest level, level one. Um, again, this is usually not this close, but this is what it sounds like. And uh, what I'm going to do now is turn on the EQ and see what we can get from this. So this is what my microphone normally sounds like, I guess you could say, with uh, the EQs on. And this fan is still on level one. Now with the EQs, I've turned the fan on to level two. This is what it sounds like. This is how it's rejecting the noise with the EQs. Um, something similar that, again, that you would have for a voiceover or streaming or something like that. And now I've turned the EQ, I mean the fan up to level three. This is what it sounds like with the EQs. As you can see right here, this is the gain and all that stuff. But in obviously with the EQs applied, it's not being picked up, but this is what the, the software is showing is uh, how loud the fan is. Now, obviously, you can adjust the microphone to whatever you need um, as far as the EQs and stuff goes. Uh, this is just something, again, I use the Wave XLR um, input. If you did decide to get one of the newer stream decks, it allows you to use USB microphones with the Wavelink software. So you could do essentially the same thing. There's myriad of plugins and um, VSTs as they're called to be able to EQ your microphone through the Wavelink software. So again, you don't have to use the XLR version of the Wavelink. Um, and you could just use the USB microphone and get one of those new stream decks or wherever, which is kind of expensive in my opinion um, for a small version of a stream deck, but it does allow you, like I said, you could use the USB function on this microphone and uh, get it to work. Now we're gonna switch over to the Shure uh, microphone to see how it compares to this one. All right, so we're gonna do this test a little bit backwards. This is the Shure microphone that you're listening to right now. Um, this is with its EQ'd. I'm gonna turn the fan on level three. And this is what it sounds like. Again, just unusable, probably not even real world scenario, but here it is. All right, turning down the fan to level two. This is what it sounds like. Um, Again, not probably the actual use case scenario. This is probably how loud people's fans are normally gonna be. But again, their fan probably will never be this close um, in a real world scenario, but this is what it sounds like. And turning the level down to one, this is usually where I have my fan at and it's usually further away. Um, but this is where it's usually at with the EQ on the Shure microphone, this is what it sounds like. All right, so this is what it sounds like with the fan on level one, with the Shure microphone, with all EQs turned off, and uh, this is the quality that you're gonna get. All right, so this is fan level two with the Shure microphone, with all the EQs turned off. This is the quality that you're gonna get with it, and this is how it sounds. All right, so this is the fan level three with the Shure microphone with all the EQs turned off. Again, this is what it sounds like. Unrealistic uh, scenario, not even real world, but here you go, this is what it sounds like. Now, seeing all that and hearing all that, I think you can understand why I say that I think this microphone is probably the best microphone for content creators out there who are new to the space of streaming or doing voiceover work or something like that. Again, who wants to future-proof themselves as far as making sure they have an XLR uh, interface in like connection or wherever. I will say that this microphone does not come with the XLR uh, cable. You will have to purchase that separately. But most of the time when you get an XLR interface, most of the time you can get a actual cable to come with it. Um, the Shure microphone did not come with the XLR cable at all. And it's more of a expensive version, which is crazy to me. But 
Um, this microphone comes with its own dedicated uh, USB cable. It does say that um, this is the only cable that is that ensures you that the microphone is going to work through USB and on top of that, the RGB is going to work through USB. I will also state that if you're just going to use the XLR um, way of using this microphone, your RGB is obviously not going to work. You're going to need some kind of um, uh, interface or wherever, like a USB hub or something like that, or power bank or wherever to get the RGB working. That's what I do. I don't hook it up to my PC. I hook it up to a USB uh, power bank that I have underneath uh, my desk or wherever that has like six ports of USB and it just powers and it just leaves the RGB uh, on. And then on top of that, like I said, just run the XLR cable to my XLR interface and that's how I get the job done. So let me know your thoughts and opinions of this microphone down in the comments below. Again, for $60, I don't think you can beat this, um, especially if there's some kind of deal going on or sale going on or something like that. I would highly suggest just getting this microphone. I think it's going to last you for years to come. You're going to get really good sound quality or wherever. And honestly, you probably would never have to upgrade your microphone again and for a while unless you really, really, for whatever reason, want to. Again, I think this is the one stop shop. Just get this microphone pretty much. Um, again, those will be links in the description. They're not affiliate links. So no, I don't get any kit back. Um, I don't get anything for you getting this microphone or speaking good about it. I just, I am a component of if a company makes some, a good product, then you should support that product and that company. And if they continue to make good products, like I've continuously seen with fine, fine, I think that you should, you know, support the company that's making good products rather than, you know, supporting a company just because of their brand name or anything like that, knowing that their products are not the best always. But um, again, Fine Fine has not let me down. I am very, very surprised of the build quality. And like I said, the unboxing experience of this microphone. If you do want to check it out for yourself, again, links in the description. Take care. Have a squid test day. God bless you and yours. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces, everybody. Much love. Thank you.